slid to is the person who sexes the, sexes the bird. Decides whether it's a female or a male. Okay? You sex the little baby, figure it out, that's a female, goes into this pile here, female. When they find the male, you know what they do with the male? They throw him in the garbage can alive. Just throw him away. Alive. It takes him about two days to die. Little baby. Little baby. Little baby male. Because they don't want the males. They only want the females. So the males get thrown in the garbage. Well, they're like, yeah, but not really. Okay? This is the truth. So, little baby birds, male, garbage can, die. It doesn't matter if it takes you three days, four days, just die. They don't care. They don't even waste their time to kill it. They just throw it away. Females are kept. Then the females are kept in rooms like this, where, as I said, 200,000 birds in a room like this. Never allowed to get fertilized, which is what you would normally have in a natural world. There would be actual mating, right? You'd actually have a mating bird. And then that would lay the egg. That doesn't happen in this case. They keep them all in the cages. Then they scare them. They turn the lights on and off. They make noises. They stress these birds out. They have to stress them out. Once they stress them out, they start laying eggs. Laying eggs. So it's easy to make an egg or a chicken my egg. Just scare the crap out of it. So you see that these things are not as simple as they are, as they think. You know, it's like eating eggs. It's not vegetarian. You're part of so much killing. It's not even funny. So much killing. Eating milk. It's not vegetarian. Look at the veal industry. Okay. And obviously eating dead animals is the ultimate expression of that, but it's really all the same. What we don't want to be doing is dealing with letting, with letting animals, we don't want animals in our body. We don't, want to, we don't want to have to play that game. We don't want to involve ourselves in torture and suffering and death for anything. Especially because it holds no nutritional value for us whatsoever, and all it really does is hurt us. All it really does. So you're talking about absolutely no reason. Okay? Eggs are disgusting unless you are starving to death, and there are great of us who have great food source. You're starving to death, an egg is one of the ultimate food sources. Let's be honest. Intellectually honest. Raw egg, if you're starving, you ain't starving anymore, now you're well fed. Raw milk, if you're starving, you ain't starving anymore, now you've been well fed. Raw milk. Raw meat, you were starving, you eat the raw meat, it's fine. You will be fine. You will live. Okay? But we're not subjected to these kinds of emergency, desperate situations. And that's not our life. We're, you're living in Lima. You live in the, you know, in the real world here where you're not starving to death all the time. In the frickin' forest, or I mean in the, in the, you know, in the desert. Or in the places where there's snow for eight months out of the year. You're not there, so don't pretend. Okay? Wake up. Get your heads out of the sand. Stop being immature. Stop relegating the responsibility to the killer. Because you are the killer if you eat this stuff. Okay? Become more mature. Keep your eyes open. Don't close them. Okay? Wake up. Be adults. Be spiritual beings. Connect to God by living according to nature. Okay? That's the overall gist of this talk. Fun? Yes, that was really fun. Yeah, no, but it's important. Because the, the ultimate yoga is the yoga of what do you eat. That's the ultimate yoga practice. There is a movie, a documentary about it. There's several. Food Inc. is a good one. Food Inc. is a very good documentary. It just says everything I've said right now, but it gives you the pictures. Oof. You don't want to see these pictures unless you still eat this stuff. If you still eat this stuff, then you definitely want to see those pictures because, because something's going to have to slap you out of it. Okay? I don't really look at those pictures anymore because they're not serving me to see that stuff. I don't participate in that. I already know how bad it is. I can use my imagination and it's terrifying. Yeah? But for people that need a jump start, 
That's a very good movie. It's changed a lot of people's life. There's a really good book. This is a really good book. It's called Skinny Bitch. The book is called Skinny Bitch. It's actually the name of the book. It's a great book. It's exactly, exactly like my own personal book, except it has a better title. <laughs> yeah, it's a better marketing title. And, and she's a little bit more graphic in, in their descriptions about animals. She's, she gives a little bit more graphic evidence of what I do in my book. I'm never a big fan of guilt as a, as a way of motivating people. Yeah? But sometimes it works. Sometimes it just plain works. I've heard many people say, I saw a picture one time of this and I never ate this again. I've heard that many times. That doesn't make me want to go out and show you all these pictures of tumors and dead animals. But if it works for some people, it works. It's not my strategy. My strategy is do it because it's smart. Do it because it's, 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 it's in alignment to God. Don't do it because you feel guilty. Guilt is not, in my opinion, a sustainable motivating force. Okay? But it works in some cases. That book, Skinny Bitch, is really cool because it's marketed to women that want to have that image of looking good. You, know? and you realize that if you really want to look good, eat this way. You really want to be beautiful? Eat this way. Because this is the way you become more beautiful. This is the way you stay young forever, you know, in quotes, meaning for a long period of time you keep your youthfulness. You want to get old? Eat cooked meat, eat fried foods, eat lots of sugar. You can be 35 and look 50 if you do that. You want to stay young for a long time? Eat lots of fruits, eat vegetarian, eat simply, don't overeat, drink lots of water, drink green stuff. Then you can be 50 and look 35. Right? Right. I have two little questions about uh, fruit. Can you eat them at night time? Is it okay? Yep. And how about some fruit that makes you gassy, like, I don't know, maybe bananas or something like that? You, fruit will make you gassy under two circumstances. One, if you're putting it on top of other food that you already ate that got stuck in the system, then it's called fermentation. Okay? Put fruit on top of half-digested other food, the fruit will ferment and then it will create issues. And the other way is if you mix a lot of different fruits together. Mixing a lot of different kinds of fruits could also create that. But if you just, if you're hungry, you have an empty stomach, and you eat just a lot of fruit, it will never create gas unless you are constipated. In which case, it's getting stuck. And when it gets stuck, it's fermenting, and that's creating alcohol, and that's making you drunk. Okay. Yeah? And one last question. How about that green stuff? What is that? It's, uh, I'll tell you after. Everyone else knows it, so I won't waste their time. But yeah, I'll give you the, the resource. Yeah. What do you think about those uh, serious meditation practitioners that, that they don't exercise and they, they still use it? What do you think of them? Do you think they can come in a This is a mystical world we live in and there's no rules. Yeah. So I would never declare that you cannot do it. But I would declare that the yoga tantra system is very clear that if you really want to experience well-being, you first have to have a healthy body. Yeah? And that exercise is a requirement. And people that ignore their physical body for too long, it's not an ideal system. Yeah? Um, and that most masters would never touch that stuff. But some do because of their, for not a number of reasons. And so I would never declare it's impossible. I would declare the chances of it of their being successful in their meditations are decreased. Yeah, but I'm not a judgmental person, and, and when it comes to masters, you can never judge masters. I told you that already. You cannot judge masters by our own understanding of the world. They're going to do whatever they're going to do. They're beyond us. Okay, um, so you know. I could easily say, oh, they're all fake, you know, or oh, they're all not really experiencing. Maybe many of them are not, because if you're really sick and un unhealthy, it's really hard to connect to God. That's what the tantric system is all about. Get your body healthy so you can experience meditation. And the number one rule of all spiritual life is ahimsa. So if you violate that, you have really violated a massive law. doesn't make it impossible, but it sure does make it less likely. Good? Okay, take five minutes.